Today's shiur begins from the bottom line of the Pei Ches Beis at the new Mishnah. Before we begin the Mishnah itself, we glance at the side where we provide a headline of what topics we will see. On, under the Nosei, the topic heading, we refer to this as the Efsharut Gevia, uh, possibilities of collection. B'matzav Shiesh Get V'eni Moksuba, a woman uh, produces a divorce document ind- indicating that she's divorced, but she doesn't have a ksuba document. Is she entitled to collect her ksuba by merely producing a get indicating her divorce? Or the opposite si- situation where she has a she is ksuba veni mo get. So we see she has a ksuba, but we don't have a, we don't have an indication that she deserves the ksuba. We don't see a divorce document. Or star choiv veni mo prusbal. This the Gemara won't dwell on this topic too much, but it, it it deals with a loan that was extended and the seventh year, the sabbatical year, passed. According to the Torah, when the sabbatical year passes, all previous loans up till that point are cancelled. The that is the the lender cannot collect his loan anymore. Shmita the Shemitah year, the passage of the Shemitah year, cancels loans. However, uh, the Gemara Gittin elaborates on this topic more. It, uh, it describes a, a, we'll call it a rabbinic innovation uh, called Prusbul, which, uh, without getting any of, the, into any of the details of how it works, but it's a legal vehicle by which a person can end up collecting his loans even after the Shemitah year. So a person uh, produces a document indicating he had lent money, but doesn't have with it the Prusbal document. Can he collect his loan after the Shemitah year? The Gemara, the Mishnah, the bottom of Pei Chesom and Beis, the last line. Hot Siah, get v'ein imo Prusbal. A woman produced a divorce document, and there is no Ksuba. The thinking is, is that she's, uh, the thinking at this point is she's claiming that the uh, Stark Suba, the document, uh, was lost. So the, we continue at the top of, t- of Pei Tesom and Aleph. The ruling in that case is Goiva Ksuba. So she's entitled to collect her Ksuba. Rashi says at the top, Goiva Ksuba, so the Eino Yocholiton, the husband cannot claim Paratich. I paid it up already. And uh, you gave me back the Ksuba document and I tore it up. Mishum, the Tanai Ksuba Maisa based in who? Because the provision of a woman receiving the Ksuba money is a court based condition. We learned from here. In the Gemara and Bava Messiah, that one who claims having paid up something that's a Misa basin, something that's court, a court based enactment, Loamar Klum. His Taina of I have paid it up already is worthless. My Taima, why is that? Call Misa basin, command the Nokit Shtorodomi. Any enactment that is court based is considered as if the claimer is holding on to a document. So, in this case, the, though the woman doesn't have the ksuba with her, it's as if she has it. The Mishnah continues, ksuba v'ein imo get. The woman produces a ksuba, but there is no get along with it. If we skip the bracketed section just momentarily, the chain bal choiv shahitzi shtar choiv ein imo prusbol, harei elu lo yifharu. These cases... Uh, that we have uh, noted with diamonds one and two, so they are not to be paid. We, let's go back to the top line. Suba v'ein imo get he omeres ovad giti v'hu omer ovad shovri. She claims that I don't. I lost the get. The husband is claiming I paid up your suba already and I got a receipt for it, but I lost it. The Chain Balchov, Shahotzi Starchov, 
Likewise, a lender who produces a document indicating the loan that he extended, and he produces it after the Shemitah year, the Enimo Prusbol, and he doesn't have along with it the Prusbol document, Hare Elu Lo Iparu. So the, the woman before and the, the uh, creditor over here will not get paid. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Minas Sakona Elech, from the period of time referred to as the Sakona. Rashi says, Sakona literally means uh, endangerment. From the time that the idol worshippers had issued edicts against the Jewish people and their performance of mitzvahs, Jews were afraid to hold on to documents like a get or a prusbol, which indicates their continued observance of mitzvahs. So documents like that that would uh, that could indict them in the eyes of the of the idol worshippers, they would tear them up. So it w- when a person, uh, let's say, does is unable to produce these documents from that point in history onwards, it was then understood why they weren't available. So Reb Shmuel says that from this from that point on, Misakon Veilech Isha Goyvuk Suba Saw Shalom Get. She is entitled to collect her Suba even though there's no get. And likewise, the Balchov Gove Shalom Beprusbol, and the Balchov after the Shemitah year is entitled to collect his debt, uh, as as we just explained, because the the absence of the get and the absence of Prusbol is well understood, and. Uh, it's not uh, indicative of things not having been done the right way. Before we continue in the Gemara, we glance at the side. We have a no say topic heading, and we also indicate that this goes till Omid Beis. The Fiha Mishnah, according to that which we learned in the Mishnah, get a woman by producing the divorce document is entitled to get her Ksuba payment. Rav Shmuel Masbirim she'ain mikan hoichach hashikais from shover. Rav Shmuel will explain that we cannot use this fact, this Mishnah and its ruling, to prove a topic that's debated throughout the Shas to, uh, regarding the writing of receipts. In other words, when when debts are paid up, can we insist on the uh, individual who receive who paid the debt? to hold on to a shover, to obligate him or to burden him with the need for keeping a shovar uh, as, his, as his means of proving that the loan or the whatever debt was paid up. Alternatively, uh, we could say, for example, that when a person pays up his debt, the, the instrument with which the debt was collected, the the shtar chov, the the bill of debt, or the the ksuba, the, those those would be torn up, and that would be his uh, defense or his security against being collected from again. So our issue is: Do we prove from here that 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 is not the way we go? This idea of tearing up those instruments, but we can very well maintain them, but we'll burden the uh, the the individual who paid up his debt with watching and maintaining a receipt. As we say, it's a it's a type of burden because that means that the person who paid up his debt always has to be on guard of the of preserving that receipt in the event that it's lost. So he's subjecting himself to uh, being collected from a second time. So now the Gemara asks opens with a question from the fact that. The Mishnah said she's goiva ksubasa. She can collect ksuba with the with the with the uh, producing of the get, with uh, uh, showing exhibiting the get. So shamas mina. Should we conclude from here from this Mishnah kaisven shover? It must be that the husband receives a shover. Shover is a receipt. So kais shover means we write a receipt, and and the husband would have to hold on to it. Because if it would be that we don't do that, and 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 she collected the get with with she collected her ksuba with what with the divorce document, and you're going to tell me that we don't we don't uh, write shovers then lechush we should worry dilma mafka law luxubasa v'gaviyabah she might produce a 
a divorce document uh, after that is she might produce a ksuba after his death and collect ksuba on the claim that she's an almona. You see, if a if a if a shovar and, and in order to so in order to prevent that that double collection, it must be that uh, as a matter of procedure we write receipts. You see, alternatively, we could have said that listen uh, until you show me the ksuba, I'm not paying the debt. Until you show me the ksuba and 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 allow me to tear it up. But we don't say that. We say that the, she, the man is obligated to pay the ksuba upon the uh, producing of the get alone. So what protects him from being collected from again like we described? It must be that we write a shofar. And as I said, that's a discussion that appears throughout the Shas. Do we insist on writing shovars, writing receipts and, and burdening the individual with watching it? Let's take a look at the Rashi the beginning of the Gemara commentary, to the lower, lower part of the narrow lines, Shamas Mina, should we conclude, Mithani Gavik says get, that she's able to collect Uksuba with the uh, producing of the divorce document, Velo Chayish, and we're not worried for the, for the following trick. The following trick is described by Rashi over the next four lines. We're not Chayish La Rumi Ma'arma. The Hodra umafik subasa bevedino achrina that she'll through uh, uh, underhanded means she'll produce a the ksuba that she claims she doesn't have she'll produce the ksuba later on in a different court v'tivil acher misasa and she'll collect after the uh, husband's death b'teras almona lomar lo nizgarashti v'lo nifrati she'll produce the ksuba in that other basin with the false claim I wasn't divorced. I was never paid the ksuba, and here's the ksuba. I want to get paid, and it would be a second paying. Daha vadai betars grusha lo gavya. To suspect that she's going to come to collect again as a divorcee, that's not going to happen. Da karina legita. We tear up the get when she gets paid the ksuba. The gets torn up. The chihadra mafka le ksuba sablo get. And when she produces the ksuba without a divorce document to collect as a divorcee, Tanan Masnis and Faru. The Mishnah tells us that uh, she won't get paid. So she won't be able to get a double collection with the claim uh, in a, uh, on, a, on a subsequent equation that, a, a subsequent occasion that uh, I am a Grusha and haven't got paid. Umihu. However, this is what the Gemara was was uh, so basing itself on, that maybe she will wait until the husband dies and collect a second time, but this time as an almona. From the fact that the Mishnah doesn't worry about that, the Mishnah enables her to collect with the producing of the get, even without Iksuba. So Shmamino, Khisman Shovar al Kokhushalov, it must be that we write a Shova receipt against the will of the of the borrower, of the loyve, uh in this case the husband. The Aina Yochola Hashmiratz Malomar and he can't evade uh payment by the claim, Lo Ephra, I'm not gonna pay Achia Tafsir Li Shtori. I'm not going to pay again until you give me back my document, the, the loan document, because I'm afraid she might pay, take it out again and collect the second time. Whereas all of that, we don't allow him to say. Rather we say, you have to pay, and the, uh, the one who receives the money will write for you a receipt. Rashi adds, Uplukti basra, and we hold, like the opinion says, we don't write a shofar. The Fishim says It's a, too much of a burden on a person who paid up his debts that he has to now watch and make sure that the mice don't get to it. So now, let's turn back to the Gemara. You'll notice we have a marking, uh, a triangle around Rav here, and a few lines later. And on the side, under our Mivne heading, we indicate Shnei Shlavim Shel Rav. There are two stages in, in Rav, 
as he appears in this sukya. Rav says something now, and later he has a change of mind. Omar Rav, b'mokon shen ksuba askinan. The Mishnah is talking about a place where they don't write ksubas to begin with. In other words, women collect the ksuba based on the fact that it's a court enactment, a maisa based in. But not, they don't write uh, documents, ksuba documents. Therefore, the chashash that we just described, that she'll wait till he dies and she'll pull out the ksuba with a claim that I didn't, uh, that, that I, uh, I'm an almona and deserve payment as an almona, that's not going to happen. And being that there's no chashash of the ksuba being pulled out later, so the attempt to conclude from our Mishnah that Kaisun Shover falls off. Ushmul Amar Af Lemokom Shekaisvin Ksuba. Shmuel says, no, the Mishnah is talking about a case where they do write a Ksuba and she'll collect with a get alone. Ah, Ushmul Kaisvin Shovar. So according to Shmuel, should we conclude that we write a Shovar? Amar Rav Onon Ladidi Mifusha Li Mine de Marshmuel. Rav Onon says, the uh, issue was explained to me by Shmuel. So, first of all, let, we're going to say no, no conclusion concerning the writing of a shover. Then the question is, so how can there be uh, a gvia ksuba with the get alone? And you're telling me that uh, we're in a place that they do write shovers. So, Shmuel will tell us that we can explain the Mishnah under two different circumstances. Now, the Gemara is a, is a little terse as it unfolds. We'll try to uh, explain. Two possibilities, two scenarios uh, with which we can understand the Mishnah. All, bearing in mind all, all the time that uh, the a payment is going to be made, however, the husband is not going to be uh, endangered from a second collection, uh, e- 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 even without the the uh, insistence on writing a shover. So the first scenario, the mokoim she'en kaisvin. The Mishnah is describing a case, or a, 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 a could be describing a case. Uh, where a ksuba is not written, the Omar Kosafti, and the husband is saying, I wrote her a ksuba. Now, she's producing a get without a ksuba. So, um, on the surface of things, we don't expect her to produce a ksuba because it's a Mokham Shein Kaiswin. However, the husband is claiming, I wrote her a ksuba. And uh, I don't want to pay because I'm afraid that she's going to, you know, like we described before, she'll pull it out on me later on. Well, we say, love lahavi raya. It's upon you, the husband, to bring proof that you wrote a ksuba. And if you can't bring proof that you wrote a ksuba, she will collect with the get. And that's the pshat in the Mishnah. Hotsia get v'ein imo ksuba. What do we mean, ein imo ksuba? The husband was unable to bring proof that he had written a ksuba. So look, at the, so there's no real danger of being collected from a second time. We don't have any indication that there really exists a ksuba. Another scenario. B'mokoim shikosmen. The Mishnah is describing a locale where the general practice was to write Iksuba. The Omra Lo Kosavli, and the woman is claiming he didn't write Iksuba. He went, uh, he went against the custom. He didn't write Iksuba. Alel Lahavi Raya. She has to bring proof to her claim that he did not write Iksuba. And if she brings a proof to that effect that he did not write a ksuba, once again, she'll be able to collect by producing the get alone. Because she, in this case, she was successful in proving her claim. 
So in both of these situations, we understand the Mishnah can tell you she collects with a get, veini mugsuba, and that the husband is not endangered. So that even even without our the need for writing a shovar. Vi'af Rav Hodar Bey. Rav has a, uh, we'll say, second thoughts, or he changes that which he said originally. Before, he had set up the Mishnah specifically in a Mokim She'en Kaisvin alone. That only in a, that the Mishnah is talking about a case of the Mokim She'en Kaisvin Ksuba, therefore there was no Hashash of a, of a Ksuba being produced later on. So now, but Rav here has a, has a different take on things. The Omar Rav, Bain Bemokum Shikaisun, Bain Bemokum Shain Kaisvin. Whether it's a place that Ksuvas are written or it's a place that Ksuvas are not written, you have two documents. You have a get and you have a Ksuba. Get Gaiva Iker. With the get, she can collect the basic Ksuba, the the 100 that we call the Mea Mersayim, the basic 100 or 200 Zuz that, that every woman is entitled to when she gets. Married to have written into the ksuba. So, so through producing the get, she gets the basic amount. Ksuba by producing a ksuba gave it to She would collect the additional amount. And anyone who wants to challenge my explanation is 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 welcome to do so. From at, with this in mind, then there's no chashash. There's no fear of a second collection. Let's take a look at Rashi in the uh, wide lines that you see under the Gemara, about halfway down uh, Hodar Bay. Rashi continues, Fauki Masnisin Betay Machrina Vomar Bain Bemokim Shikosin Ubain Bemokim Shankosin. Rav had a change of mind and says that the Mishnah could be talking about places that the custom is to write Exuba or places that don't. Kimafka get blow ksuba when a woman produces a get without a ksuba goiva ikru ksubasa dainu mono masayim. She is entitled to collect the basic ksuba amount, the 100 or the 200 uh, zuz. The goiva de kotoni masnisen, the Mishnah that said, Hotsiyah get, the animal ksuba goiva, the word goiva uh, with, with the get is the Iker karma, Veloto Sevis. It's a reference to the basic Ksuba, not the additional amount that husbands might uh, often write into the Ksuba beyond the basic amount. The Chimafka Ksuba lo get, when she produces a Ksuba without a get, Geva to Yisevis Velo Iker. She's entitled to collect the amount above the basic Ksuba, but not the basic amount. Chayshin Shema Gavasai, Alpi get. When she produces a ksuba without get, we're chayshish, we, we suspect that maybe she received the ksuba, uh, that, that is, she, um, she, not the ksuba, she might have received the, the basic ksuba amount, that is, with the get. So that's why when she produces the ksuba without the get, she gets only the toisevis, only the additional amount that the husband might have graciously written into the ksuba, but not the basic amount. So with that, we don't have anything to worry about. The, um, and that's what the Rav is saying. The, anyone who wants to come to challenge us can, is welcome to come and challenge us. Nothing further to worry about. The Gemara raises a question. You'll see that this is a, a uh, long question. And we can tell you ahead of time, just by scanning the Gemara with the markings, you can see we squiggle underline Bisholem or Shmuel, and four lines from bottom we squiggle line Ella the Rav, so that you can guess that this is going to be a question on Rav's approach. Tnan. Ksuba v'ein imo get. This is a quote, of course, from our Mishnah. A woman produces the Ksuba document, but without a get. He... Omeris Ovad Giti. She claims that I don't. Uh, I lost my get. The Omer Ovad Shovri, and he claims I paid the Ksuba already uh, with the uh, producing of the get, and I lost the Shovar. V'chein Balchov Shehotzi Starchov Eni Mo Prusbol Harei Elu Lo Yifru. 
uh, the woman and the Baal Chov in these, in these cases will not get paid. Bishlama Lishmuel, the Mishnah can be understood according to Shmuel, who had said that whether it's the basic Suba or the Toisephes, with the producing of the get, she is able to collect. So Shmuel will explain this Mishnah that says, Hare Elu Lo Yifru, Muhi La Bemokim She'ein Kaisvin. He'll say that the Mishnah is talking about that scenario. By the way, Shmuel gave us two scenarios. So he'll tell you that the Mishnah is talking about that scenario where the general practice was not to write a ksuba. The Omar and the husband claimed Kosafti. I did I wrote a ksuba. The Amrin on lay, I see Raya. And we tell the husband, Oh, you claim you wrote a ksuba. And you don't want to pay until you see that ksuba. I see Raya, bring a, bring proof that you wrote the ksuba. Vilo my see Raya. And if he doesn't bring proof, Amrin on lay, zil pare. We tell him, Well, then you have to pay with the producing of the get. So what happened in the, in the Mishnah is he was unable to bring a Raya that he wrote the Ksuba. So he was forced to pay with the producing of the Get. And then what happened was she then subsequently uh, uh, produced the Ksuba. And regarding that, uh, we say you, you, the husband does not have to pay because of his claim that he had paid with the producing of the get. Elo Rav, Nihi de Iker Lo Gavya. According to Rav, though, that's split. He said the get will enable her to get the basic amount, and the Ksuba will enable her to get the Toisephus. So, according to Rav, Nihi de Iker Lo Gavya, granted the basic Ksuba she doesn't get because, as the Mishnah said, she doesn't produce a get. Toisephus miha tigvi, the amount above the basic Ksuba she should be entitled to collect. The Toisephus, that amount that a husband often writes in above the, the monomosayim. So, why does the Mishnah say no collection? Omar of Yosef, Hocha b'mayaskinon, the Mishnah that says, Lo yifru, Kishe'en shom ede gerushin. We don't have witnesses that testify about the gerushin. Mihu diyocho lemeimar, Lo girashtia, since the husband could claim, I never divorced you. The Gemara continues at the top of Omid Beis, Yochol Lameimar, I can say, Gerashti of Anasati Lo Ksubasa, I divorced her, and I paid her the Ksuba. So, since he has that claim, the Mishnah says, he doesn't have to pay. So, we're um, basing the uh, explanation of the Mishnah in, de- in order to defend Rav's position on that, the Mishnah is speaking about there were no a day Gerushin. There were no witnesses. Now, so you have a woman that they're producing a Ksuba, but there's no get, and they're not even witnesses to her being divorced. So, as far as the husband is concerned, he could test, the, he could say, I never divorced her. The Gemara asks, Ha mi the Kutani Seifa. The Mishnah entitles a gvia of the ksuba, collection of the ksuba without a get. And how can Rav Shimon Leol allow for that? It must be that there are witnesses that, that could testify about the divorce. If there were no witnesses to the divorce, so how could Reb Shumam Leel entitle her to collect? So this, let's say, resurrects the problem for Rav. Ella, 
Kula Reb Shimon ben Gamliel he the Chisuri Mechaser Vahachi Katani. We have to uh, reevaluate the Mishnah and tell you that the Mishnah is really all Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. It's not as if there's a Tanakama versus Reb Shimon Gamliel, but it's all Reb Shimon Gamliel, and thusly we are to understand it. So that the the Mishnah begins by telling us. Uh, that there, a woman produces a ksuba without a get. We pick up from the Mishnah, Hare elu lo yifru. No payment needs to be made. Bamed vamurim kishain sham ede gerushin. Because there are no ede gerushin, as we explained before. Avol ye sham ede gerushin. If, however, there are witnesses concerning the divorce, gav your toisephus. She'll collect the toisephus with the producing of the ksuba. That is all in accordance with Rav. The Iker, and it, what about the basic ksuba? Imafka gita gav If she produces a get document, she'll get it. The ilo mafka gita lo gav and if she doesn't produce the get document, she won't get that. And from the point in time that the uh, the Gentiles imposed edicts against pra- the practice of Jewish law, so even without the uh, pr- producing of the get document, she'll be entitled to get the basic ksuba. Shem Shimon Le'oimer, Misagon Ve'elech, Rav Shimon said that from the point of the edicts onwards, Isha Goyve Ksuba Shalom Beget, or Bachoyv Shalom Beposbol, a woman's entitled to collect uh, her ksuba, even without the get document, and a Bachov can collect the uh, debt after the Shemitah year, even without a Prusbol. The Gemara raises a question. You'll notice in the next few lines we've highlighted terms using geometric forms on the side of the Gemara. We have the Nose Mivne heading. The uh, diamond highlights Almonois Minanisuin Umina Irisin. A woman becomes an Almona from after having consummated her marriage, or she becomes an Almona, she becomes a widow, uh, her husband dying before they consummated the marriage. We call that Almona Mina Irisin. We'll also see a geometric form, a uh, volcano shape, a trapezoid. And this highlights the following. It, it, you'll see the word Valechush appears using this shape. And if you scan down the page, if you, it's, sometimes it's uh, worth doing that ahead of time. Notice that you'll see this shape reoccurring uh, in the wide lines as well, at the end of, the, at, at the end of one of those lines. This shape is halos chashoshois, raising of suspicion or worry, uh, to take into consideration cases laor dino shel rav. In light of rav's din, rav's law, shenita ligvois ksuba al yadeh get that uh, a woman can collect her ksuba with the producing of the get. Uh, we saw Rav says that she is entitled to collect the basic ksuba with the producing of the get. So niftach efshoriyos shomaisa arama. There opens up possibilities of underhanded behavior. So now we begin the Gemara. Amri le Rav Kana v'Ravasi le Rav. Lididcha, according to you. The Amris get goyve iker that through producing the divorce document, the woman is entitled to collect the basic suba almona min hanesuin gavya. What about a woman that's not divorced? She's a widow from uh, from nesuin. How can she prove her uh, entitlement uh, to the basic suba? Be a day misa. She would prove that with uh, witnesses that would testify that her husband is dead. You'll notice there's a Rashi at the top. Almona b'may gavio ksuba shelo. 
How will an almona collect to ksuba? Al korchach be ede misa shemei spaylo. It must be through witnesses that the husband died. Umachzer es shtar ksuba liorshim and the ksuba document she would be giving back to the heirs who would be of course paying her the current or so and it would be torn up. So the almona minan esuin we've established she collects her ksuba with the ede misa. Velechush, Dilma, Girsha, Umafka, Legita, Vegavia, Beg. Should we not suspect that maybe this woman was divorced and she'll produce a get and collect a basic ksuba? Rashi points out that she'll go into another basedin and collect the basic, a basic ksuba with the get. The Gemara answers, I don't have to worry about that because the uh, almonamin and Isuin that will uh, will be able to that uh, concerning whom we won't worry about that is Biosheves Tachas Baila. She uh, was known to have been dwelling with her husband up till the time of his death. Rashi says, An almona will not collect the ksuba unless we can verify that she was living with him till the time of his death. Because as we just said, uh, if, <laughs> if we don't know that, then we will suspect a double collection. Question, V'dilma somoch lemisa girsha Maybe he divorced her right before his death, and then the the suspicion arises again that she'll produce the get on a later occasion in another court and get a second collection. The Gemara says, "Well, if if uh, that happened, who the then the husband himself brought the husband brought upon himself that loss. In other words, he did he uh, did something. We'll say that uh, that's kind of foolish." Um, creating this precarious situation by uh, divorcing her right up to right before the time of death. Almona Mino Erison, but my Gavia, what about a widow that became a widow before she ever lived with her husband? This is after Erison, before Nisuans, the first stage of marriage where husband and wife did not live together. And yet she's entitled to the ksuba. How does she collect the ksuba? Be misa. With witnesses to testify the man died. Ah, v'leichus dilma girsha umafka gita v'gavio. What about the suspicion we raised before? That maybe he divorced her. And... So uh, witnesses will tell us that the husband died. Fine, he's uh, she, the husband's dead, but maybe he had divorced her before that, and she'll uh, get and, and she'll mafka gita v'gav. She'll produce her get in another basin and collect the uh, the ikur ksuba again. The Gemara answers. You'll notice the answer is a, a long answer. We have a long answer marking. In situations where there is no way uh, to avoid foul play other than writing the shovar, then we will write the shovar. So that in cases where there is room to suspect foul play, then we'll write a shovar. However, in, in situations that we don't suspect foul play, we don't write a shover. If you don't say thusly, by the way, um, as we pointed out, this uh, I mean, the basic answer we just gave. And now, we, we uh, verify that. We strengthen that answer. By saying that if you don't say thusly, Ede Misa Gufayo, the a collection of the ksuba through the producing of witnesses that the man died, which is what we just said is the way the Almona Minerison gets her ksuba. So even without taking into consideration the the get issue, focusing just on the witness method of collection, Nechush Dilma Mafka Ede 
Misa, Baha'i Bey Dino Vagavya, that she'll produce witnesses that her husband died in uh, the witnesses will testify in this basin and she'll collect her ksuba. Father Mafkaba Bey Dino Achrino Vagavya and produce witnesses in another basin that he died and collect again. Ela Vadai Bimokum Delo Efshu Kasvino Shovar. As we said, that where there's no other way to avoid foul play other than uh, than uh, producing a sh- than uh, writing a shover, so we will we have to then write the shover. You notice we have a very long bracketed section. There's a starred note that reads as follows: shel chashash aroma. After the brackets, another question uh, like the ones we've raised till now is presented a the the issue of how do we deal with the suspicion or the uh, the worry about possible foul play the socha sograim within the brackets agmor mechapeses moker luksuva laalmono mino erison how do we even know what where is there a source that uh, where is there a tenaic source that a widow from the Erusin stage, a woman who had not consummated her marriage yet, is nevertheless entitled to a ksuba. So, now that we've mapped out the Gemara, we can go through the bracketed section. Omar lei mark shisha brei de rav chista le ravashi. Al mono mino Erusin, menolon de is lo ksuba. Notice the triangle that appears now, and there will be quite a few of them as we go on in the Gemara. So on, this, on the side, we have a mivne, a structural note, where the triangle is presented as a ma'akav, an attempt to keep track of a give-and-take style of Gemara. Hatsa'ol l'moker, with the point facing up, it indicates a suggested source. And the inverted triangle, dichio, a rejection. So we'll have suggestions, and fo- each suggestion followed by a rejection. The uh, what will be interesting for us to note will be: Will we actually come up with a sufficient uh, source for Almono Mino Erison by the end of this discussion? The Gemara, e lema. If you're going to say meha from the following. Nis armolo in his garsha, bain mino erusin, bain min an asuin gavis akul. So in this source you see a woman who became a an almona amongst the different possibilities. She was an almona from erusin. And it says in this source that she's goiva. She collects. So that would indicate that the almona mino erusin gets a ksuba. The one says that's not conclusive that she has. A ksuba, we'll say from mitnai based in. That's you know why why there's a ksuba there. Duma de kosav law. Maybe he he wrote a ksuba. He volunteered a ksuba by writing one on his own for her. Well, the chitema e kosav law. If that's the case, if that's the answer, if if knows if that's your rejection. Because it's not talking about an official ksuba, but rather he wrote one on his own. My lemeimra. Why then teach something like that, like that that this source says, which is so obvious? The Gemara says there's no. It needs to be taught. Lafuke midrebelozim nazaria to the exclusion of his opinion. The Omar shelo kosav lo elo amenas lekoinsa. The opinion of Herbozim Razaya is that a woman is entitled to the Tosefes, the additional amount above the basic Ksuba value or Ksuba amount, only, uh, she's entitled to it only if he's Koinsa. Koinsa means he consummates the marriage with her. So this source is coming to tell me, no, even without consummating the marriage, she will be entitled to everything. According to Rabbi Lozer ben Azayah, if she becomes an Almona ben Erison, she'd be entitled to the basic Suba alone. So this source is coming to counter that and to say otherwise. 
and daikonami dikotoni goyve esakol. The source emphasizes in all cases the goyve esakol, which is uh, that word hakol includes the tosefes. E amers bishlomo de kosav law. If you say it's a case that he wrote a ksuba on his own, mishum hachi goyve esakol. Therefore, she's entitled to receive the entire amount. Eloi Amris, the low Kosav law, if you're saying that he didn't write a ksuba, my goives hakul. What is the reference to a, in, an entire amount? Monomosayim hu the isla. Uh, she would get the basic ksuba, the basic uh, court entitlement, the tanai ksuba from the, 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 the tanai based in oriented ksuba, the, 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 as we said before, the court enacted ksuba. So, from the fact that the Lashon of the, um, of the uh, source just quoted was Goyves HaKol, we're talking about a Ksuba with a, with a Tosefes, and it must be that he had written it out. Because if he hadn't written out a Ksuba, then there's nothing, there's no HaKol to talk about. All, all there is to talk about is the basic amount. From the source above, we don't see that Almono Mina Erison gets a Ksuba by virtue of the Tanai Beisdin. And that's what we're looking for. We're not, we're not looking to talk about cases where the, where the husband on his own voluntarily provided her with a Ksuba. Viela Midetoni Rav So let's try this as a source. From Rav teaching. Ishto arusa lo oinein velo mitamela a a man who entered first stage of marriage with a woman and uh, she died. So the the laws of mourning do not apply. He doesn't practice aninus, which is the uh, well, just for our purposes, it's the first stage of mourning. He doesn't practice that velo mitamela. And if he is a Kohen, he does not uh, tend to her burial. He doesn't defile himself to her. V'chein he, likewise, if the Arusa survives her husband, he dies on her. So, loy oinenes v'lo metameloi. Mesa eno yorsha. If she dies, so uh, he does not inherit her. And mes who if he dies, and here's the main point, Goyve Ksubasa. Now, just focusing on the markings, the we've dashed underline Arusa, and you see Goyve Ksubasa. So here you have a Tanaic source indicating that a, an Arusa is entitled to a Ksuba. The Gemara says, Dilma de Kosav law. Maybe this source, like the one above, is a case where he wrote a Ksuba on his own. And that's not what is of interest to us. We're looking for, from where do we know that a an Amona uh, Minha Erison is entitled to a Ksuba based in because of the, the court enactment, which would entitle her to a Ksuba even if he didn't write a Ksuba. The Gemara says, continues, V'chitema, if you try to... Uh, Say otherwise, e kosav lo mai I will answer you. It needs to be taught. Mesa eno yorsha it's the richale. I need to tell you that even though he wrote a ksuba to her, and which we can assume indicates that they were very close to consummating their marriage, nevertheless he does not inherit her inheritance. It takes place only after nisuin. So that, that's information that I need to be taught. But once again, the source could very well be talking about a case that he wrote the Ksuba. So we don't see from here that Almona Mino Erison is entitled to a Ksuba mitnai based in. So as you can see, uh, we clo- at, the, at this point we come to the end of the bracketed section, which leaves us uh, still without a, a source, a Tanaic source, that Almona Mino Erison is entitled to a Ksuba from me, me, based in. 
Omerle Rav Nachman Rav Huna. And here we go back to the uh, style of Gemara from before the brackets. La Rav the Omar get Geva Ikar. According to Rav, who says that by producing the get, the woman is entitled to the basic suba. Let us suspect that she might she'll, that she'll she'll collect in this basin her first collection. And she'll produce again in another basin. She'll take out the get and collect again, double dipping in a in a second basin. The chitemo de karinonle, and if you'll say, ah, but we tear up the get. Uh, when she gets paid, we tear it up. No, Omra bo'inu subi, but I don't want you to tear it up. I need the get to show that I'm divorced. So the Gemara answers the karina lay. We do tear it up, so that that eliminates the suspicion of her collecting again with it. Now, as far as her concern that she needs proof that she's uh, now uh, free to get married, the kasvina nagabe, and we write on the on the reverse side of the get. Gita denon karnui. This get is, is is torn up. Lav mishum de gita posul. Not because it's a, a an invalid get. Ela de lotad de vetikvi be zimno achrina. So it's simply to prevent her from collecting with it a second time. Before we continue with the mission, we glance at the side. We have a no say a topic heading. Shnei gitim or shnei ksubos or variations on the theme. We didn't write that in, but you'll see that the Mishnah presents other combinations. Mikrim shonim, different cases. How many times is the woman going to be entitled to receive her ksuba payment? Sounds a little abstract, but with the examples of the Mishnah, hopefully it will become clearer. The Mishnah. Shnei gitin ushtei ksubos. A woman produces two divorce documents and two ksuba documents. Goyva shtei ksubos. She's entitled to collect two ksubas. Rashi adds uh, important information. Shnei get the mishnei ksuba. Zman ksuba rishayna kaidim. Lizman get rishayna. Zman ksuba shnei kaidim. Lizman get sheni. Very simply. The woman was married, divorced, and then her husband took her back and divorced again. All right. So if that happened, uh, and I want to add an important point. When he took her back again, he wrote a second ksuba. That's very significant. And because he wrote a second ksuba, that entitles her to get a second ksuba payment. Uh, we will we'll see in the course of our discussion a situation where a man divorced the wife she had a she had a, a, a ksuba initially he divorced her and then took her back without writing a new ksuba and then divorced her again we'll see that the halacha in that case is different we continue shte ksubos veget echon two ksuba documents and they both are dated earlier than the divorce. That's one case. Oi ksuba ushne gitten. Or a ksuba and one get. Uh, uh, one ksuba and two, uh, two gitten. Uh, I must uh, apologize that we. Uh, I wanted to read a Rashi uh, before we continue with the Mishnah. The Rashi is going back on the first case of Shnei Gitin U Shnei Ksubas. Rashi continues, Goiva Shtei Ksubas, Shere Girsha, the Xira, the Kosovo Ksubashnia. Aval, Kidmu Shtei Haksubas Leget Horishon. If you have two Ksuba documents whose date predates the, fir- the, the first get, Lo. Then there aren't two ksuba collections. Sharei kishich zira, when he took her back, lo kosav lo ksuba. He didn't write a second ksuba. Now it's true that there are, physically speaking, two ksubas. 
But procedurally, when he took her back after divorcing her, he did not write a new ksuba at that point. The two ksubas we, that we just mentioned were predated the get. So since he didn't write a second ksuba after taking her back again, she is not entitled to collect the two ksubas. Utnan b'seifa. Rashi continues. He is introducing that which we are, will see in the Mishnah. It, said in the, it says in the seifa, shteik subos v'get, eno govel achas. If there are two ksubas and a, and a divorce document, she gets only one. A man who writes two ksubas ain't a goyvel achas. She's entitled to collect only one of them. And if you'll say, buddy, he divorced her and he married her a second time, doesn't that second marriage necessitate or entitle her to a second ksuba? Not so. We, are, we also learn ksuba ushne gitin ain lo elo achas. If you have a ksuba and then a divorce document and then a second time she's divorced, she gets only one ksuba. Shalman asks ksuba rishona hechzira. His taking her back in, uh, for, the, for the second marriage, which true resulted in a divorce, but when he took her back, he was taking her back with the understanding that all she's entitled to is the original ksuba that he, that he, that he wrote at the first stage. So now, let's go back to the Mishnah, and uh, we pick up with the end of the line, Roman numeral number two. Shtei ksubos v'get echot. And now we understand this a little better. We saw this featured in Rashi. There are two ksubas whose date predates, both of them predate the get. Oi ksuba ushne gitin. Or, this also we saw in the Rashi. A ksuba uh, with, with two gitin, indicating that she had been divorced remarried and then divorced again or that situation where there's a ksuba a divorce and uh, he died in all of these cases she's entitled to one ksuba a man who divorces his wife and takes her back and we emphasize without writing a new ksuba after taking her back almanas ksuba harishona machzir he's taking her back with the understanding that the ksuba she's entitled to is the original ksuba that he wrote before they initially got married the Gemara we spoke in the Mishnah about two ksubas and saying she's entitled to one we had described in the Mishnah in Roman numeral number two, case Aleph, Shtei Ksubas Veget Echad, and we said there were two Ksubas that predated the divorce document, and, the, and she's entitled to collect one Ksuba. Which, which one? E Baya Bahai Gavya, E Baya Bahai Gavya. Well, whichever one she wants. Now, the two Ksubas were written on different days. You have one that's dated earlier than the other. In general, when you have a, a debt that's written out in a document, the ksuba is a form of money owed to the woman. It's a, a type of debt. The date establishes the point of time from which that party has develops a lien on, in this case, her husband's properties. Which means that from that point on, any properties the husband sold are subject to her collecting from them in the event that the <coughs> husband doesn't leave any uh, money of his own. Those are called the lekuchos. So the lek- people who buy from this man any properties, any real estate, are essentially they're, they're subjecting themselves to a, a certain level of risk that people to whom the husband owed money earlier than their purchase, can seize upon their purchase. When you're dealing with two ksubos, so there, there's an earlier, there's one has an earlier date and one has a later date. 
if everything else being equal, it's better to have a ksuba with an earlier date. That entitles you to collect all lands from that early time, all lands that he may have sold from that point onwards. If one is holding the document with the later date, so the lands that he may have sold prior to that are not subject to the lien. That having been said, Lema Tehevi Tufta the Rav Nachman or Mashmuel. According to the impression our Mishnah gives, that if she wants to use the Ksuba with the earlier date in it, she is welcome to do so. That would then be a refutation. For, I mean, our Mishnah would end up refuting Rav Nachman or Mashmuel, who's an Amora, who said, the Omer of Nachman or Shmuel, Shnei Shtaros Hayoitzin Bozachar Zeh. When you have two documents, two bills of collection, one following the other, Bitel Sheni Esorishon. The second one, in effect, cancels the first one. And that means that, uh, under those circumstances, two documents that uh, indicate uh, that indicate a debt, the same debt, but one document was written later, according to Rav Nachman, the second document cancels the first one and no collection can be made through that earlier dated document. So our suggestion of Ibaya Baha'i Gavi, Ibaya Baha'i Gavi, that our Mishnah communicates would be a problem, a refutation of Rav Nachman. The Gemara answers, no, our Mishnah is not a refutation of Rav Nachman. Lav Itmar Allah, Omar of Papa, was it not said concerning the case of our Mishnah uh, or concerning a, a case of Shnei Shtoros, like our Mishnah, that Umoid by Rav Papa said, Umoid Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman himself would concede the Oisif Bey Dikla if the second document has something additional. In the case of, let's say, a, a document of sale, someone was selling property, and in the second document it indicates that there's a, a, a piece of property plus a tree, an extra tree was thrown in. Dikla is a palm tree that if in the second document there's something added, it's litoisefes kasve. It was written in order to include the additional element and not written as a cancellation of the earlier document. Hochanami, so too, uh, in our Mishnah, the case is bidoisef law. The husband added, added money in the second suba. So the woman is posed with the following choice. You can collect the lesser amount, but benefit by having the earlier date, or forfeit the earlier date in favor of having a larger amount to collect from the second dated ksuba. We continue in the Gemara. Uh, Just as background, we have a, a man divorced his wife and then took her back. Hotsia get uksuba umisa misa means a day misa a woman produces a divorce document as we indicated the man had divorced her he then took her back so the woman produces a get a ksuba and witnesses that she is also an almona rashi at the bottom umisa vede misa uh, she has witnesses that he died. Uba ksubos. She is coming to collect two ksubos. Achas betoras gerushin. One as a divorcee. The achas betoras almonas, and one as an almona. We continue with the uh, source, of, and it continues at the top of Sadi Yomid Aleph. Im get kaidem leksuba. If the divorce document is dated earlier than the ksuba, gaifish de ksubas. She's entitled to two ksubas. Why is that? Well, she was first divorced. Upon the divorce, so he wrote, he had, he owed her a ksuba, we'll say, but tonight based in, he automatically owed her a ksuba. Then we find that when he takes her back, he writes a new ksuba. The ksuba that he's writing now is, is for the sec, for their second marriage. So that entitles her to two ksubas. 
Ksuba Kudemis Leget. What in effect does this describe? Well, it means the couple had married. He wrote a Ksuba. He then divorced her. He then took her back, did not write a new Ksuba, and then he died. She's entitled to only one Ksuba. One who divorces his wife and then takes her back without writing a new ksuba, almanas ksuba rishoyin hechzira. He's taking her back with the understanding that her ksuba is the original ksuba that he had prepared. Uh, as we go on in the uh, Gemara, we have a new Mishnah now, and we see a double underline. We look at the side under our Mivne heading. Uh, we indicate Havlotas Ksubosa Kayemes. This expression will repeat itself in two cases that the Mishnah presents. Koton Shesio Aviv. This is a, a rather unusual case. There is a uh, Tresus in Sanhedrin, I believe, that is worth looking into for more information on this. Uh, it's indicated on the side, the Sanhedrin I involve with Bays. Why do I say this is unusual? Because in general, we and we've seen this already in our Mesichta, that Maise Ktana Klum, the actions of a, of a minor, is nothing. Here we have a, a boy who's uh, under Bar Mitzvah, whose father, uh, will say, arranged his marriage. So he, uh, he this, this minor who, um, will say he's... Uh, in Sanhedrin we learn that he's probably Somach Lepirka, he's, he's near adulthood, but he's still a minor and his father uh, arranged a marriage for him, so he marries a woman and a, a Ksuba is written out Ksubosa Kayemes, that means that the, the very Ksuba that was prepared while he was, when he was a Koton uh, is the Ksuba, it's, Kayemes means it lasts, it's this, it is the Ksuba that um, is binding when they uh, after he becomes an adult. Shalmanas Kain Kaima. It was with this in mind that he stayed uh, that he that that he uh, stayed with her. Ger Shinizgayer Ishto Imo, a Gentile couple, man and wife, that converted to Judaism together. Before their conversion. They, as a as a Gentile couple, he had prepared the equivalent of a ksuba, a financial guarantee that we are familiar with. And then they convert. Ksuba sakemas, that ksuba that had been written while they were Gentiles, continues. It's, it, it is the ksuba that he is obligated to. Shalmanas king kaima, it was with this in mind that he continued his marriage with her. Of course, when they uh, after they convert, so they'll have to go through a, a formal Jewish marriage ceremony. But uh, nevertheless, it's uh, there's no uh, uh, writing of a new ksuba. Omar Rav Huna lo shonu elamona masayim. We should, uh, before we go further into the Gemara, though, let us glance at the side. We have a topic heading to no say. There are two opinions we'll see in the Gemara regarding the uh, understanding of that term, Ksubosa Kayemes. Does the Ksubosa Kayemes refer to the basic ksuba only or does it refer to additional amounts that that may have been written in during that uh, pre-official time in both cases so Omar of Huna lo shonu elamona masayim the teaching of the Mishnah that ksubosa kiemis the ksuba uh, continues is only true with regard to the basic amount, the 100 or 200. Avol Toisefes ain't law. But the additional amount, she's not entitled to that. Rav Yudah Amar Afilu Toisefes Yesh Law. Even the Toisefes amount, the additional amount that was written into that 
pre-official time Ksuba is also binding. Meisvei. We raise a question on Rabbi Yudha. We have a Tanaic source that is uh, re- related and relevant to our Mishnah. It says, Chitshu, noiteles mashi chitshu. Chitshu means uh, it, was, it was renewed. So, the, uh, the understanding right now is Chitshu means an amount beyond the basic monomasayim was put in anew after they converted or after they uh, uh, after he became an adult so then they're entitled to that amount chidshu in lo chidshu lo if a formal addition was made after their conversion or after the adulthood then they're entitled to the addition to the uh, monomasayim if not then they're not entitled. They're entitled only to the basic amount. That's a problem for Rav Yehuda. So Rav Yehuda says, Emo, af ma What uh, What's meant by that is that there was a, uh, uh, in the pre-official time, while they were Gentiles, or while he was a minor, there was a ksuba with a toisephus amount, and what this source is saying is that if, a, if an additional amount was added after they had converted, that we, we would say a Tosefes on the Tosefes, so there, she's entitled to get even that. Leaving us to think that if there wasn't an additional Tosefes, a Tosefes on the Tosefes, so all she'd be entitled to is the original Ksuba with its original Tosefes. So far, that would be good for Rav Yehuda. The Gemara asks, V'v'halo Tani Hachi. That's not what it says, though. The, in, the, in the following Tanakh source, you'll see that that's not the understanding of Chitshu. It's as follows. Chitshu, Noiteles Mashi Chitshu. If there is an additional amount, if some uh, additional amount is written in after the conversion, so she's entitled to get that. Lo chitshu, if no additional amount was written after the conversion, so to what is she entitled? Only the basic suba, basula gave him the amona mona. That's all she's entitled to. In other words, if there was no effort to, to add after the uh, conversion or after the adulthood, all she's entitled to is basic, the basic suba, tufta de Rav Yehuda. This would then be a refutation of Rav Yehuda. So the Gemara says, be that as it may, let's try to understand Rav Yehuda, where was he coming from. Rav Yehuda was, was um, was mistaken, it was made, his mistake was caused by the Mishnah. In other words, the the, the uh, um, opinion that Rabbi Yudah expressed before was by his mistaken understanding of the Mishnah. Who Savar, he thought, Ksuba Kayemes, the, those words, the Ksuba from the, the pre-official time, the Gentile time, or the minorhood, that Ksuba, whatever it has, Kayemes, it is maintained till after the conversion. That that expression, Akula Milsakai, is referring to whatever was there before, including the Taisafes, will continue afterwards. Velohi. And that is where the mistake was. Aikur Ksubakai. The expression of Ksubasa Kemis is a reference only to the original basic Ksuba, the Monomasaim. That is what continues through after their conversion or after he reaches adulthood. But not to imply that. Well, if there had been a Taisefis, that also continues. That's not so. So as you can see, we've reached the uh, end of the ninth parak of Ksubos, uh, Besiata Dishmaya. With that, we conclude our Shior for today.